Hello and welcome to the IND Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Dunicic. Like, comment, subscribe. Join our growing international community. Let's get right into our story today, which is finally concerning the Freedom Convoy, or the group of truckers, sympathizers, and other protesters who have been committing blockades, massive protests, and disrupting the economies of the United States and Canada. Now, just to give you some background, the Freedom Convoy started as a protest in Canada. It was nationwide throughout the entire Canada and all of its provinces. And it started off as truckers, people that drive big rigs and are essentially completely crucial to every economy. Truckers move around goods and they help drive economic growth, help provide for services and move goods around. Basically, they are the backbone of any nation's economy, especially those that are dependent upon ground transport, such as Canada's and the United States. Now, basically, this protest started amongst truckers who had been required to receive a vaccine mandate. Now, the vaccine mandate instituted by Canada stated that truckers going across international lines between Canada and the United States, which is a common route traveled by many truckers in the northern hemisphere between Canada and the U.S., had to be vaccinated to enter Canada. Now, the protests started off as relatively medium-sized, but they grew in fervency and support, and they became a nationwide and global phenomenon. Now, it should be stated that the initial motivation for these protests was the vaccine mandate that was targeted towards truckers. However, the protests and the motivation for the protests slowly developed. After the vaccine mandate, it began to encompass COVID mandates in general, things such as restrictions like to wear masks or social distance, and people wanted their freedom back. This is when the Freedom Convoy developed the name the Freedom Convoy, because fundamentally what these truckers are fighting for is what they perceive as freedom. And openly, while I try to not be biased, I am going to say that I sympathize with these protesters, just so you know. Now, finally, the protest began to grow in fervency even more and develop into something much, much deeper and much more political, not just ideological. Now, the protest turned into one against Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Now, no one fucking likes this guy. That's just a reality. Some people on the left do, but Justin Trudeau is just genuinely speaking unlikable. I'm not going to say that he's a bad prime minister or that I disagree with his ideologies. The guy is just really bad, socially speaking. He's just unlikable. And we're going to go into more details about Justin Trudeau, but the purpose of this report is to focus on the Freedom Convoy. What is developing today, because there have been major developments and some massive things that have happened before. Now, it should be noted that the Freedom Convoy is one of the most disruptive protests in a democratic democratic nation to occur in modern times. Not only that, but the freedom protest, which started off as a domestic movement inside Canada, has encouraged and inspired copycat or similar protests in countries like France, the Netherlands, and Belgium. All over the world, there was even an attempt to create a freedom convoy in the United States, but those attempts did not come to fruition. Now, it should be noted that this Freedom Convoy began to what started off as a protest against vaccine mandates and turned into a protest against COVID-19 mandates, basically fighting for freedom, turned into a much more encompassing political movement against Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. But the most fascinating thing about this entire protest is how disruptive it is. This protest has caused massive blockades which have hurt the domestic everyday functions of various Canadian cities, including Toronto, Ottawa, the capital city of Canada, where the protest is still going on, uh, Toronto, which I just mentioned, and Manitoba, where a blockade just recently ended last week. Now, the most major moment of this entire protest ended in the previous week, when the protesters managed to successfully block off the Ambassador Bridge, which connects Windsor, Canada, in the Ontario province, to uh, Detroit in the United States. Now, the Ambassador Bridge is one of the world's largest transportation hubs for ground transport. Not only is it used for general trade, it is used for everyday functions, particularly in the auto industry. These protests were so disruptive that auto industry companies were not able to move auto parts across the borders, and many automakers had to shut down production for multiple days, significantly hurting both the United States and Canada's economies. 
Now, there have been consequences to this protest. That is a fact that cannot be ignored, whether you support and agree with them or not. But the reality is, is that protests are meant to be disruptive. When you cause economic pain, not suffering, but when you make it economically visible and make it so that people can feel what's going on with the protests, you send a message to have some kind of negotiations, some kind of discussion, and some kind of changes made for what you're protesting. Fundamentally, what these protesters are doing is actually productive in terms or uh, successful in terms of achieving protest goals. Now, what needs to be noted is that this has been massively disruptive, and some people would even say uncivil because it is. And it's shocking that this is coming out of fucking Canada. Now, Canada is well known for having some of the world's most civil, law-abiding, and pleasant people on earth. And that stereotype is actually true. I was recently in Toronto. I don't think I've ever met a more almost unsettlingly, unsettlingly nice people on earth. If the French are the rudest people on earth, which is actually kind of true, the Canadians are the exact opposite. They're extremely pleasant, they follow the rules and they genuinely seem to care about one another and they don't want to make a scene or hurt anyone else. So it is fascinating that this kind of protest came out of Canada and increased in fervor to go against Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And this just shows you how fucking unlikable this guy is to inspire the nicest, humblest, most civil people on earth to create such a disruptive economy shattering in your face kind of protest. Now, it should be noted that these protests have been going on for three weeks now, almost a month. And the reality is, is the vast major aspects of these protests have died down. The last stronghold where the Freedom Convoy is still continuing is the capital city of Canada, Ottawa. Now, Ottawa has been completely blockaded off. Major streets cannot be moved through because again, these protests are being carried out with big rigs, some of which have had their tires removed and some of which have been chained together to make it impossible to move them. Big rigs are gigantic. I'm not saying that it's impossible to tow them, but it is extremely difficult. These are not normal cars. In addition to the big rigs, other types of vehicles that are very large and hard to tow have participated in the protest, notably, tractors and um, what's it called? What's it called? The, the, the caravans, large caravans and mobile homes have also participated in these protests. Now, that is how disruptive it has been. This was something that was nationwide across all of Canada, but it has relatively died down, most notably with the massive blockade that was going on in Manitoba peacefully ending last week. The protest continues to occur in Ottawa. And the reason that it is occurring in Ottawa is because Ottawa is Canada's political capital. That is where the parliament building is located. That is where the ex executive branch of the nation is located. And these protesters are trying to send a political message. They have been honking their horns and they have been protesting and shouting for change, fundamentally uh, decrying COVID mandates and Justin Trudeau's general mandate as prime minister of Canada. And these people have not been listening to the police or court orders. Recently, a court ordered and educated that even if the protests are occurring, that they cannot be honking their horns. Keep in mind, these are big rigs. These aren't beep, beep. These are brr, brr, giant horns that are being blared on a constant basis. A Canadian court decried and stated that these horns cannot be blared. The protesters have not listened, which has pushed the Canadian executive branch and local governments and different uh, law making and law enforcing bodies to begin to find other ways to disperse this protest. Now, Canada is notably a country that takes care of things in a much more pleasant and less aggressive way. The police have been hesitant to move into the Freedom Convoy. One reason is because the Freedom Convoy has attracted a lot of veterans, people that are generally conservative, and many of which are armed. They do have firearms. Now, this doesn't mean that the people are necessarily going to use these firearms or that violence is going to break out or that these are violent people, but the firearms being added to the equation could result in some acts of violence being committed either between police or protesters. It doesn't matter who initiates it. Violence is violence and losing a life over a political protest in democratic Western countries is not something that is fundamentally acceptable. 
You know, Canada isn't America. <laughs> so the police have been, over the last two days, been trying to warn these truckers and these protesters to just leave, stating what can happen to them. And the government of Prime Minister Trudeau, who apparently cannot catch a hint that this protest is about freedom and is against government oppression, has decided to react with even more government oppression. And he's shocked that the protesters haven't left. Now, Trudeau, Trudeau earlier this week, passed Canada's Emergencies Act or instituted, invoked Canada's Emergencies Act. What the invocation, invocation of Canada's Emergency Act means is that these protesters can be treated as an emergency, an extraordinary threat to Canada, meaning that extraordinary law enforcement measures can be taken against them which basically means that one, police can remove and arrest these protesters. But furthermore, in a very disturbing move that is not something that you typically see in Western democratic and free nations, the government of Canada has allowed and has the empowerment to block and freeze the financial and bank accounts of these protesters. Additionally, additionally to that, the truckers that are partaking in this protest can have their licenses, their commercials driving licenses, which allow them to operate and drive these big rigs and which are the basis and source for their livelihood taken away from them. And the protesters, to their credit, demonstrating their motivation and their pure belief in what they are doing, have still refused to leave. Now, it should be noted that when people are protesting against what they view as government oppression, responding with oppression is only going to encourage them to protest more. Now, the police themselves have been hesitant, as I mentioned before, to remove these protesters. I'm not going to say that the police are sympathetic to them, but typically aggressively removing protesters is not something that is done. The last two days, yesterday and today, what Ottawa police have been doing is going around and leaving notes and flyers urging the protesters just to peacefully leave. Again, this protest has been going on for three weeks, which is an extremely long period of time that has disrupted the city of Ottawa and Canada in general. They have been handing out flyers, not arresting anyone, not engaging in any kind of law enforcement activities to arrest or detain or get into some kind of altercation with the protesters, just informing them to leave. And in the most Canadian thing ever, they've also been handing out flyers that in the event any of these truckers, big rigs, or any of the vehicles are towed, stating where they can find their vehicles and how to get them out of the tow depot, which is extremely helpful and nice. Now, the government and the police are trying to use their last attempts to resolve this peacefully because fundamentally there are a lot of protesters involved. Additionally to that, you know, tow trucks, one, a lot of tow truck companies, sympathize with these truckers and what they're standing for. A lot of tow trucks fundamentally aren't going to touch these big rigs. They're not going to touch other vehicles. And even if they wanted to, towing a big rig is possible, but it's extremely difficult, especially after some of the protesters have removed the tires of the big rigs and chained some of them together. It's not impossible, but it would be a difficult feat, especially while the protesters, some of which are armed, are still there. Now, Trudeau's government is attempting to resolve this peacefully, but his language today in the Canadian Parliament demonstrates that he has an extreme hatred of these people, stating that they have been an enemy of Canada's economy, that they have hurt public safety, and that they have hurt the trade relations with Canada and the United States. Now, fundamentally, hurting trade relations is true. They did do that by blocking off the Ambassador Bridge, or the largest land crossing between the United States and Canada for goods. But... Trudeau's government seems to be taking a more aggressive stance, which is putting police in a very awkward situation. As I mentioned before, police don't want to move in for a lot of reasons. But one major reason is this kind of protest where trucks and massive vehicles have been used to systematically over a long period of time block off and barricade the roads of traffic of a nation and major cities right now, the capital city of Canada has never been seen before. There is no police playbook that the Ottawan police can just look at and say, oh, well, this is what the police did in America, don't you know? We can take care of this real quick. This is the first time this has happened, really, in the world. 
and all police chiefs and police departments and the world is watching the Ottoman police to see how they solve this issue. Everyone's curious, how are you gonna take care of this, right? Now, finally, from a political end, forcefully dispersing or arresting these protesters is going to send a very negative message and is only going to encourage them even more. Now, it should be stated, as I said previously, that these protests are against what is perceived as government oppression. And it, this, by reacting aggressively, is only going to increase that perception and increase the fervency, the prevalency, and the amount of protests in the future. It should be noted that Canadian police have already responded to one part of the Freedom Convoy and arrested dozens of protesters last week on the previously mentioned Ambassador Bridge. Some of the uh, stay-in protesters that did not initially leave had to be arrested. And this has only added fuel to the fire, inspiring the protesters to have even more conviction in what they are doing. Now, we have to talk about the effect that this has had on the residents of Ottawa. It should be noted, as I've stated before, that this protest has been happening for three weeks and the residents of Ottawa have kind of fucking had enough. Keep in mind that these big rigs are constantly blaring their horns. These people are protesting and fundamentally living in a city where this is going on is extremely, not just annoying, but crippling to the daily life. Now, the most major reason that is crippling is these trucks are blocking off major traffic routes, making it harder to get to work or just be economically productive for all actors and residents in the city. In addition to this, the government claims that many residents of Ottawa feel unsafe that they have been threatened or harassed. The government also claims that there have been fires set in Ottawa. Now, I don't fundamentally believe the reports of the government, and I think that they're attempting to demonize these protesters and make it easier and more justifiable for when they go in there and forcefully remove them. But nonetheless, this is something that is becoming a disturbance to the people of Ottawa. And that is what protests should be, disturbing and disruptive. But the reality is, is this has been going on for three weeks and the protests do come at an interesting moment when most COVID mandates are being thrown away by Western governments. The reality is, is the COVID pandemic seems to be coming to an end. Not that the COVID pandemic is over and that coronavirus no longer exists, but the reality is, is that it's become endemic. The Omicron variant and whatever has come after it seems to be much less deadly and dangerous to people that are getting infected. It should be noted that cases are also dropping by 19%, which either means that cases are actually dropping, that virus has become less transmittable, or that people aren't getting tested because they don't feel sick and deaths are staying stable. So the reality is, is these protests came at a time where governments are already dropping some of the stricter mandates related to COVID-19, but these people want freedom. And really, as these mandates get dropped, as these truckers have to go back to work, this protest will eventually resolve itself. If the government or the police make an overly aggressive reaction to the protest, it's only going to add fuel to the fire and is going to inspire future sequels to what has already been one of Western democracy's most disruptive and most effective, really, protests that we've seen in modern history. Now, the last thing that should be mentioned, and this doesn't really have to do with the news, but the reality is, is many of these protesters and truckers who have been living in Ottawa for the last three weeks have been seen with their children. Now, if you are watching this video and you are at these protests yourself and you have your kids with you, send them somewhere else. This is no place to have children. Now, that's pretty much all I have to say regarding these protests and the Freedom Convoy. Basically, it's at a standstill and a stalemate between the protesters and the Canadian government, who historically has been one of the most progressive and non-strict governments there is. Reacting with police violence or police brutality or police aggressiveness is going to change the face of Canada and will be a historical moment that could inspire future protests to come and could set a disturbing precedent for the future of Canadian politics and Canadian society. Now, I pretty much told you what I think about the protesters and that I am sympathetic with them, but let me know what you think. What do you think about the Freedom Convoy? What do you think about Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who seems to be universally unliked? And how do you think the situation is gonna be resolved? Let me know in the comments. I look forward to seeing you guys next time.